All right, 6.8, linear combinations and spanning sets. In two space, there's a vector i and a vector j. These are given, these are the given unit vectors along the x and the y axis. Now knowing this, we can write any vector in two space can be written as a linear combination of i and j which means that I can take, for example, the vector 5, 3 and rewrite it as a combination of i plus j, 5i plus 3j. Another vector, such as negative 2, 7, can be written as negative 2i plus 7j. Now, knowing this, it's very important to note some additional information. There's a fundamental theorem of vectors that states that given any two non-collinear, non-zero vectors, non-collinear meaning not on the same vectors, so for example, non on the same line going in the same direction, so, and non-zero vectors, which means that they can't have a, you can't have a zero vector as part of it, in R2, every other vector can be written as a unique linear combination of these two vectors. So this is the fundamental theorem, which basically says that if I can, I can take any two non-zero, non-collinear vectors, so any two random vectors that don't have uh, similar properties, and what you can do is create another equation that is the addition of those two vectors. So now these two vectors are said to span R2. Now think of your hand span. If you were to take and find your hand span measurement, you would have to stretch out your hand and find out from your pinky to your thumb, the hand span. Look at your fingers. It looks like your fingers are spanning across. Let me just show you in a picture. So if you look at these fingers, you can think of these fingers as individual vectors. So imagine that we have these type of vectors, each of these as vectors, they're going on their own merry old way. So we have a hand span where all of the fingers are going in different directions. Well, in two space, meaning given an x and y coordinate grid, so for example, if I was to draw an x and y, just a grid system like this, I can take any of these two vectors, let's say, these two right here and these two vectors I can write as a linear combination of any other vector because these two vectors are said to span to equal any other vector. That is the fundamental theorem of calculus. All right, let's go back to the previous page. So given any two non-collinear, non-zero vectors, we can write every other vector to be written as a unique linear combination of these two vectors. So let's look at an example. Example number one, write the first vector as a linear combination of the other two vectors. Now, what that means is that in the fundamental theorem, it means that I can make this as long or as short as I want it to be multiply by some scalar, and multiply this one by some scalar, and that equals this value. So we let a and b be scalars such that I can write a times the first vector, 1, 6, plus b times the second vector, 2, 3, and that has to equal the third vector, which is negative 1, 39. When we do that, we can write it so that all the i's go together. The i's are 1a plus 2b equals negative 1. The second one, we write the j's together. 6a plus 3b equals 39. Knowing this, what we can do with this is now use what we learned in grade 10, which is substitution elimination to solve for a and b. So, given equation number 1 and 2, we're going to eliminate a by multiplying 6 times 1 
And for equation number two, we leave it alone, so we're calling it line three and line four, and we're going to subtract three minus four to get nine b equals negative 45. Again, we're subtracting each and every single one of these lines so that we get 9b is equal to negative 45, which means that b is equal to negative 5. You substitute it back into one of the equations, the originals that is. We're subbing it back into 1, and you find out that the a value is equal to 9. So therefore, we have unique values for a and b such that 1 and 6, 2 and 3 can be rewritten as a linear combination of the vector negative 139. So what that means is that 1, 6, and 2, 3 are going to span R2. They're, they're nonlinear, non-collinear, non non-zero vectors that can be written as a linear combination of another vector. So the linear combination here is 9 times vector 1, 6, minus 5 times vector 2, 3, and that will equal negative 1, 39. If you think about it, if you actually multiply them out, you will find out that you actually get these values. 9 times 6 is 54, minus 15, and that will actually give you 39. Neat, eh? Okay, example number 2. Would the set 2369 span R2. Now you just saw the answer there, but I want you to think about why. Remember the definition of spanning, that they can be they must be nonlinear, non-collinear, sorry, and non uh, zero vectors. Well we don't have zero vectors there. Zero vector would be zero zero, but we do have something there that tells us that this would not be able to span it. And the reason why is that 2, 3 can be written as a combination of 6, 9. So 2, 3 and 6, 9 are collinear. That means I can take 2, 3 right here and multiply 2 times 3 to give us 6 and 3 times 3 to give us 9. So these two vectors are actually the same vector, just a scalar multiple of each other. And here's the example. Let's look at example number three. Prove the set 2, 3, negative 1, 2 is a spanning set for R2. To span a spanning, to figure out a spanning set, you need to understand that first of all we look at it and say, are there any zero vectors? The answer is no. Are they collinear? The answer is no. So we have to prove it. What does that mean? Think about it. Okay, what we have to do here is prove that a times the first vector plus b times the second vector is going to give us a unique answer such that x and y are unique so that you don't get just the same number over and over again. This, that would be true to get the same number over and over again if we had two vectors that are collinear, such as the one in example number two. Now, to prove this, we have to prove it for any general point. That's how you prove something mathematically. You have to prove for a general point. The general point here is x, y. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's rewrite this as a linear combination of i's and j's, so that we have the i's all together, which are 2a minus b is equal to x, and the j's together, which is 3a plus 2b is equal to y. What does that give us? So here it is, there's the statement, and there's how to solve it. But let's go start from the beginning. So the idea here is that what we're going to do is take 2 times 1 plus 2 to give us this value. That doesn't, let's try that again. 2a, so what we have to do is eliminate. The goal is to eliminate. Express the a and b in terms of a combination of just x and y. So a and b individually to be solved in terms of x and y. So it's like we need to eliminate. 
To eliminate, we have to do the following. 2 times 1 is the following, 4a minus 2b is equal to 2x. So I need to eliminate, I'm going to eliminate here the b's. So 2 times 1, and then equation number 2, we leave it the way it is. Now, what we're going to do with line 3 and line 4 is we're going to subtract 3, take away 3, sorry, add 4. We're adding them to get rid of this. So 4a plus 3a is 7a. We got 0b is equal to 2x plus y. That means that a is equal to 2x plus y over 7. All right, so that means if I had numbers here, I could plug these numbers in here, and that will give us the answer for a, guaranteed. Now, so we sub this answer that we found into equation number 1. We do that to find the value of b, and you find out that b is equal to, and now what we're going to do is, so we subbed it in 2 times a. Here's your a right here. 2 times that is 4x plus 2y over 7, minus the b, which is what we're subbing in over here. Okay, minus the b is equal to x. And then we're moving the x on this side, the minus b on that side. When we move the x to this guy, this side, folks, we have to remember that it's going to be 4x minus 7x plus 2y all over 7, common denominator. And you find out that negative 3x plus 2y over 7 is equal to b. That means if I know the values of x and y, I can plug it in to here to find the value of b, so our scalar value. What this results in is a unique solution. Both a and b have a unique solution so that we can find the value, we, so that these two vectors result in a unique answer regardless of what the coordinates are for the linear combination. And that means that, lo and behold, folks, this actually spans this actually spans R2. So these two coordinates span R2. All right, that's the end of this one video. We're going to go on to the next. Have a great day, or see you in the next video.